Well, hey friends, thank you so much for stopping by our channel today. What you're about to listen to is the most recent sermon preached and recorded live during a weekend service here at Chapel Springs Church. I invite you to subscribe to this channel right now. Head on over to our website, chapelsprings.org, for more information and also check us out on social media. Thanks for being here. I'll catch you next time. Deuteronomy 6. Let's read this together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. All right, how are we doing? How's the fasting going? Yeah. <laughs> Some people are hungry, hangry. <laughs> hey, just want to keep encouraging you as we enter this final week of our fasting. Um, if you fell off, it's okay. Get back on with us today. And let's finish strong, and we'd love to see you at our prayer time Thursday night if you can make that, work it around your schedules. We've had amazing time in God's presence. It's just been beautiful. Well, we've been leaning in here the last two weeks in our series called Whole, Living the Integrated Life, where we are talking about what it looks like to have ourselves fully, wholly committed to God throughout every part of our lives. And Deuteronomy 6 here has been our text as, um, you know, Moses stood up in front of God's people as they are getting ready to take the promised land. And God had given them all these commandments. And Moses knew their hearts were going to be torn to try to worship the other idols of the people around them. And he Put this out to them, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And this has become um, a very prominent prayer for the Jewish people. And this would have been prominent for, for Jesus. He would have been formed by this. And in fact, when a religious leader came up and asked him, you know, Jesus of all the commandments, he thought he was going to get Jesus on this one, but he said, of all the commandments, which one's the greatest? Jesus said, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So we've been really leaning into that. What does that look like with, with all your heart, all the, the insides of who you are, and the soul, the whole of your life, and then your strength, which we're going to talk a little bit about here today. But the graphic here, remember, um, the, our inner life echoes throughout every aspect of our life. It ripples, right? It reverberates. And so we need to commit within the core of who we are and let it flow out of every aspect of our lives. And I was diving back into the scripture this week and just sitting with it, and something really stood out to me. Um, this is one of the benefits of just sitting in a text for a few weeks you start to see things very differently. And um, what stood out to me this week was when Moses says, you must write. Write these commandments. Write the words of God. Write them on you. Write them around you. Everywhere you go, put them down. And this was significant because you think about the fact God is a communicator, God communicates with us. The creator of the universe wants to talk to you. Sometimes we take that for granted because there's people who serve other gods, false gods. He's not talking to them. <laughs> but the one true God wants to. He desires it. And so he communicates with his people. He even puts his commandments, his ways in stone. He writes them. God wrote them himself. 
And so then Moses says, now you write them on you. So this is one way we're reflecting God as writers. So God was intentional with writing the words for us. We have to be intentional to write them on all of who we are for him. Does that make sense? And then think about, think about this. I tried to figure out how to word this for it to make sense um, because it's kind of mind blowing. You know, this whole text is talking about the one true God. He's it. And he calls us to reflect his ability to write, but also to reflect his oneness by being one, by being whole. He's, he's one and he's saying, you are called to one. You are called to wholeness, not to be all divided within you. That we are to be wholly committed as one whole being over to him. We are reflecting God when we are walking holy before him. Holy and holy. W, H, you see what I did there? Yeah, H, yeah. Holy and holy. So we're, rec- we're, we're reflecting his image. Um, remember this truth. We've said this for the last two weeks. True love for God is rooted in the heart, but it is demonstrated in life. It's rooted in the heart, but it's demonstrated in life. And that goes back to um, the, the graphic we saw, the core of who you are, that inward, that's where your commitment is, is flowing out of, and it's going to be visibly seen. I like the way the prophet Micah says it. He says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. It's a very public, Right? We are to reflect the ways of God. We are to walk in them. I've heard since I was little that our faith is to be private. I've heard that off and on, especially our culture. Well, that's, that's what you believe. That's between you and your God, and you just keep it private. Our faith has to be public. It is part of our faith. It's just the way it is. It is designed to be public. We are to demonstrate it in all areas of our lives. And I think sometimes we've become so divided because we've given into what the world's told us. Oh, we don't want this over here. We don't want your faith in this aspect or this aspect. We can't help it. We've given our entire selves over to God, and it's going to be seen by all. So Moses says here to love the Lord our God with our strength. This is him making clear that it's all of our life, everything we have, and especially he's leaning into resources here, what we do, how we engage with others. And he emphasizes this when he goes in and he instructs them, tie God's words on your hands and bind God's words on your forehead. So we talked about having a tattoo artist out front for you guys today, but we thought that may not go over well. (laughs) Uh, But some people are like, well, do I literally have to go put it on my body? And the thing is, there came a point in God's people where they started to do that. But what God's emphasizing here is that it's symbolizing that God's ways are in your heart Reflecting in the work you do, how you care for people, how you engage with people, how you think, how they see you. It's very public. And then he goes on and he says, write them on doorposts and gates. Again, people are to know it. It's not a private thing. Make it very public. That that is um, Moses's point here is that every door you go in and out of, people should see Jesus. Every gate in every town, people should see Jesus. And so the emphasis here is on keeping the word of God before us. I, I had someone um, here, in fact, it was Brian Hume, a, a year and a half ago, he gave me a scripture on an index card and I have it on my refrigerator. And this week I was processing, processing some stuff with my roommate 
And you know when you start talking and processing and then you start encouraging yourself in the spirit. And I, I, I said, Connie, read that. Read that card to me right now. It's on the refrigerator. And she, she just starts reading it to me, this scripture verse. That's the type of stuff Moses is talking about. However you need to keep it before you, keep it before you so that you can live it. So that it's in your heart. And I, I was telling you guys earlier, I love um, going into people's homes and seeing the chalkboards that do you guys have one in your house you do and where parents are writing scripture verses weekly scripture verses or whatever you guys maybe you write recipes on it I don't know um <laughs> yeah f football scores on it or something <laughs> but that's a way of putting God's word out there putting it before you to remind you as you are going in and out of your home, as you are going about engaging with people, um, that your faith is public. And two weeks ago, we showed this picture of the iceberg and how you know 90% of the iceberg is underwater, 10% is above water. And too often we just spend time focusing on the above. Um, but it's really ultimately reflecting what's beneath. And but I want you to think about what's public in your life. Think about your work, how you conduct business. These are things that people can just easily see. How you handle money, your relationships, how we treat one another, our mouth, our gifts, our talents. There's so many things that are very public. Are people actually seeing what's reflected below? Are they seeing Christ reflected in those areas? So Deuteronomy 6 is just a reminder of that whole commitment to God. And I love um, what the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 does. He, um, he's a good Jewish man. He would have known this prayer, the Shema. He, and he puts it, though, in a different way in, in Romans 12. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Paul has the heart of Deuteronomy 6 here. It's the it's the living sacrifice. He's not telling people to go light themselves on fire for God, is he? He, like, he's not literally telling them that. He's saying your entire life, the whole of who you are is to be given over to God because he will transform it. If you don't give it over to God, the world will deform it. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. You are going to be conformed to the pattern of the world or to the pattern of God's kingdom. Which one is it going to be? And he calls these people, your entire selves, your entire life, turn it over to God as a sacrifice in worship. And so I've asked Pastor Josh and Pastor TJ to come up here this morning and just to talk through a little bit um, of what, how we're going to end with this series. And we're going to put out a, a big challenge here at the end. But I want to talk through, just check in with you guys. What has been your big takeaway um, from this focus on our whole commitment to God? Yeah, I think one of the, the big takeaways from the series, um, we were discussing this at our life group on, on Monday night. And just how in, like connected the relationship between the outer and the inner life actually is and how they affect one another. And when there's discipline in your outer life, it often can look like discipline in the inner life. But on the other side of that coin, that when there's chaos in your outer life, it will often look like chaos going on inside of us. And, and sometimes you don't even realize the chaos that's happening inside of you fully. Uh, but what's beautiful about this, if we can learn to take these cues, is that what's going on in your outer life can often be a signal to what's going on inside of you. And God will often have that happen. And so when you start noticing yourself, or if, when, as I've been noticing myself in different areas where I've gotten off kiltered and staying up too late and not waking up and doing my morning routine like I want to do, I'm like, okay, 
hold on a second. Like, wh what, what does this mean? Wh what's going on? There's probably something a little bit more happening than just me not living out what I typically would live out. So what's going on? Taking the time to actually pay attention to those, sim uh, uh, to those signals and then ask God, God, what are you trying to do? And Pastor Stephanie, you, and, you, you really challenged us at the beginning of this series to uh, invite God into the inner life. To say, God, search me and know me. Know my anxious thoughts. Knows the things that are going on inside of me that I don't even know about myself. Because so many times there's things going on in us that we don't know what's happening fully. But before we ever start to get the revelations of those things, God already knew what was going on in us. So when we start to yield those things over to him and say, God, here is my heart. Here's my life. What are you trying to speak? And I don't know about you, but oftentimes I can be running to other things when, I'm, when things aren't going well. <laughs> when things are a little bit chaotic and I can run to other things. And P Pastor Josh, last week, I was really convicted when you said, that's why we like to be busy. Because it takes our attention away from God. It can be often our avoidance to hear the hard words that he is trying to speak to us. And I heard you say that last week, Pastor Josh, and I was just like, okay, well, God, can we be done now? Because that's, <laughs> I can just dwell on that one for a little bit. God, what are you really trying to do? And so just how these two, our inner and our outer lives, they affect one another. And this can be such a tool for us to really start to understand what God is trying to speak to us. That's good. When I'm thinking about what's challenging me, what's talking to me, uh, I am directly challenged with time and how I address it. Time comes and it goes and it will not pause, it will not stop for anything. So the only thing that we have to do is figure out how are we going to steward the time that God has given us? Uh, will I waste it uh, with moments? Uh, will, will I overstuff it with, with hurry and busy? Uh, will I continue to allow my addictions to drive its values when it comes to my screen time and everything else? How much I love to watch football, so on and so forth. Go Chiefs. Um, all those things, I know that was a little, pot. And moving on quick. Um, I've been challenged on how I create and protect the time that God has given me in my whole life, right? So I'm not just talking about uh, family life or my work life or my social life or my physical life. Whole, this whole series, this whole idea is stepping to us and telling me personally, Joshua, uh, you need to bring your whole entire person into one place, one life. That's all it is. I'm th I think about this in Colossians 3.23 where it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Whatever you do, in everything you do, you are constantly trying to bring it back. Work at it as unto the Lord. I, I don't know about you. I have a couple friends that if they jump in the car and I'll say, Hey, what do you want to do? They'll say, Whatever. And sometimes we kind of lose this whatever attitude with God that he steps into your space or you step into his and he's like, hey, what you want to do? And he's like, and you're like, uh, whatever, but that, but I won't do that. You're in this weird tension where you have lost the attitude to say, whatever you want to do, God, I'll do it for you. And then there's this tension of, okay, once you say whatever, then you have to put your hand to the plow and do some work. The intentionality to follow up your can-do attitude with will-do attitude and gon' do attitude and just do it attitude, put your hand to the plow so whatever you do, work. Work it as unto the Lord. And I, I'm taking this into my time, and I'm like, all right, God. What do, you, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, just come with the whatever. Be willing to put in some work and then do it as unto me and not human masters. 
right? So my, my thought process about that, and when we think about human masters, usually I'm willing to be brave enough to stand up to somebody that's, I'm in a toxic relationship, you're not going to lord over me. If it's, a, if it's a boss, if it's a coworker, if it's whatever, you look at society and say, society, you are not going to master me, and you feel this thing, but what happens when you look around and you're saying, there's no one else around you that is trying to master you. It's you trying to take your life into your own hands. And when it says, do not allow, you're going to do everything as unto the Lord and not as unto human hands. I read that as do that everything as unto the Lord and not unto Josh's hands. Not unto what I want. So when it comes to my time, I'm like, all right, God, I'll do whatever. I'll put the screen down. All right, God, I'm going to replace this bad habit with something good, something that you're leading me to. All right, God, and whenever some fruit comes about it, it's not going to be for me. It's going to be for your glory. And the purpose by which I do it is not so I can get puffed up about what I did, but everything I do is unto you. So this whole entire whole thing is bringing this oneness of address your time, Josh. Address your disciplines. Address who you are everywhere you go in that regard. Um, I know as, as pastors we meet with a lot of different people and we see the realities of life and um, can you just for a couple moments here speak to maybe where you're seeing people struggle with integration and um, just encourage us maybe in those areas or two. Um, one of the struggles that I, I like to say what I see in me, which I can think relates to a lot of people, is is just being the same everywhere. And one day I felt like the Lord told me, asked me a question, said, are you tired yet? I'm like, what do you mean, am I tired yet? You know, there's this word that's out there called code switching. It is what you do to be... A, this person over here and that person over here and this person over there so that you can either fit in or that you can get some kind of leg up. It's you, you end up switching who you are depending upon where you're at. And you got to know this. When you do that, you are tiring yourself out. You got to remember how you talk over here and how you walk over there. And I felt like the Lord said, are you tired yet? I'm like, all right, God, deal with me. And he's like, which one? Do you want me to deal with you at home? Is that the person that we're trying to unify? Is it the person that, that's happening at work? Is it the person that happens when you cut off? When you take the coffee from, from the lounge over here, you do not treat that same, you do not treat humanity the same way when you go to Starbucks. Which person are you, are you asking to unify? So I felt like when he said, are you tired? He's like, I want to deal with one person. I, I desire for, for everybody to, to keep Jesus at the center in your sonship, keep Jesus as the center in your, as I'm being a husband, as you're being a wife, as you're being a person, as you are being a parent, as you're being an employee, as you're being a friend. Some of the things that we're, we're, we're struggling with is the, the changing of all we are in every place. So to surrender that to the Lord and say, God, I want to be consistent Everywhere that I go, and instead of using all my tire, all my strength in trying to keep up all these different personas, I want to say yes to Jesus and use the power of the Holy Spirit not to keep up the face, but to actually do the work and advance the kingdom of God for his glory. So, so that's one thing that I'm seeing in us and I'm praying for us collectively that we can say, Lord, just, just make us one with you instead of many faces of us. And what's awesome about that is that when you do that, it takes the pressure off you. It takes the pressure off of trying to figure out which person you're going to be in that moment. You're just who God has really called you and made you be. And I would say that just in general. I, I feel like God would say that to our congregation because I feel like sometimes we can put so much pressure on ourselves that okay I gotta love God with all my heart my whole my whole soul my whole strength okay 
Now I got to do this, all this stuff. Now we're going to be fasting. It was funny when we talked about fasting in our life group, it was like a collective groan came over the group the first week because they were like, oh man, we got to do this. Um, and sometimes we can put all this pressure on us, all this pressure on us to try to be perfect, but we're never going to be perfect. I was uh, getting some car work done on my van this past week, and I go, and I get there, I pay all this money, right, for the, the car, and he's like, oh, there's a complimentary snack bar over there, and I'm like, okay, cool. I go over there, I'm like, I'm going to get my chips, and I'm going to get this, get my money's worth, and I open it up, I'm like, eating the chips, then I'm like, I'm fasting. <laughs> Well, I got my money's worth, so, so there was that. Um, but, like, I don't think God was mad at me in that moment, you know? And I think sometimes we can view the Father as this domineering individual that is just over us and be like, you got to love me the right way and this, that, and the other. And we can put all this pressure. We've got to fast, got to do it the right way. But realistically, God is a Father that just wants us to be with him. He wants us to, to rest in his presence. And when we start to yield our whole selves over to him, I think so often for me, the reason why I struggle to do this is because I'm nervous about what his voice is going to challenge me to do. I cannot want to hand certain things over because I'm wanting to hold on to some things. And if you're out there and you're like me and you've been in this position before, I, I would tell you that any time I've listened and obeyed that voice, whether it's do this or don't do this or be about this, any time I've listened and I thought it was going to cost me something, it did often cost me something, but often what I gained was far greater than anything I, it cost me. And I think that's the truth of who God is. He's wanting us to trust him. It's the reason why I wore this sweater today, because often in this season, I've been <laughs> hearing God say, okay, there's a reason why you're a little bit chaotic in your outer life right now. There's some stuff going on. Trust me with it. And I would encourage you, just as I'm encouraging myself, let's, let's trust him. Amen. So what we want to do um, as we bring this series to a close we don't want to bring it to a close. We want to lean into this the entire year. And so we've put on our website, on our homepage, um, a tab that you can click on, and it says the whole challenge. And we want to challenge you toward wholeness this year. We, we want to encourage you to, to look at your life and say, where is there not quite integration? And if you don't know what that is, you could probably ask someone that knows you well next to you. <laughs> they, they could probably give you a, a couple of hints of where that might be. Uh, but look at your whole life. Where, where is God's commitment not reflecting well? In what aspect, in what area of your life? And so there's, um, think back to the core, who you are, your inner life, and then how it echoes throughout all the different spheres of life. And so... Um, there's family life, marriage, singleness, work, pace of life, rest, mental health, physical health, sexual health, finances, and so many other aspects of our life, right? And we want to be whole. We want God to be integrated in all of this. So what we're challenging you to do this year is lean into one area where you know I have not given that to God where he is saying, let me in, invite me in. And you could overwhelm yourself and probably look at maybe six, seven of these. We don't want you to do that. Just say, God, we want transformation in, in this area. And, and I have a feeling he's probably already challenging all of you in something, he is us. And we're going to share that you know, with you, but let's just talk through a few of these. I know Josh last week talked a little bit through family life and what that looks like for him. Yeah. I, I just, you said, you know, you can ask a friend or one thing that is probably a good indicator for you is as you see this list or something pops to your mind, 
And if somebody were to bring it to you, you almost automatically get offended. That's it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, if you touch a sore and you flinch, that probably is an indicator that something needs to be healed there. Right? Sit, sit with what provokes you. What, what's that? Sit with what provokes you. Sit shoes. with what yeah. provokes you. So if I'm reading this, family, marriage, singleness, work, pace, life, mental health. I'm like, all right, Jesus, all right, yeah, we good. All right, all right, all right. Physical health, well, that's where you feel the ouch. And uh, when your pastor is up here just being real with y'all, please don't judge him when he has a donut next week when they come back. <laughs> Doesn't mean I shouldn't have the donut, but it just means just don't judge, brother. No, uh, but what I'm saying is, that's an area in which God is challenging me, saying, all right, Josh, what are we going to do? It's, it's a struggle sometimes. That physical life, it's, it's the sin that everybody sees. It's the sin that's on the scale. It's the sin that's in the blood work. It's the sin that's in it all. And you're just like, all right, God, I don't want to deal with this. But he's like, you know, if you want to talk about discipline, let's bring integration into this area. If you want to talk about wholeness, if you want to talk about caring for your family, how long can you care for your family? Let's, let's integrate this. So this, this is like an area where I'm like, all right, God, I, I want this. No, take back. I don't want this. I need this. Because there's times where the want and the need are two different things. I had a student come back in town over this Christmas break, and she's a dancer, and uh, we dancer like ballet. And she was uh, she wrote, took a road trip with us, and I'm asking her how school everything, and she's talking about how she misses dancing. I said, okay, what is the one thing that you will take with you for the rest of your life about dancing? She said, it is. It is that discipline is is greater than motivation. And I'm like, okay, what do you mean by that? You know, because I feel like I'm a motivated person. I want to, I'm a motivational speaker. Let's let's go, let's go, charge that hill. She said, here's what happens is you can be motivated up to a certain point until the motivation is gone. And then you have to lean into the discipline that will you show back up to the studio and dance? Will you show back up to the gym? Will you show back up over here? Will you show back up and be faithful when the motivation is gone? And I've felt like the Lord just hit me right there and said, you are a highly motivated person. But your discipline is, you know, we could tighten that up. So I think that's an area for me that as I read this and I hear the Lord speaking to, to me on these challenges, all right, Josh, let's tighten up them disciplines. Will you surrender that to me and see what he says from there? I know, um, yeah, for, for me, I am really leaning into my physical health. I have been spending a lot of time with my doctor lately, and they've been poking around. And in fact, look, my bruise. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I've been taking a lot of blood, but you know what? I need to know my numbers. I'm at that age. I need to know my numbers and I need, um, and I didn't like some of my numbers. And so um, I'm just, I want to, as, as it goes back to Paul, um, you know, giving our whole selves, the, the whole of our bodies and sacrifice and giving it over to God. And it means not ignoring <laughs> the reality of numbers and growing older. And so I'm, I'm leaning into that. But I want to say this. There was a time when um, I would say my singleness was not in a healthy place. And I want to speak to some of you who maybe you've, you've never been married or you've gone through divorce maybe you're widowed, that um, invite God into that. Sometimes there's so much emotion and anger. And, and you know what? People say stupid things about singleness in the church especially, and it's hurtful. And sometimes we just shut that part of our lives down. I think God wants some of you to open that up to him. Because let me tell you, it is healing when he does that. And you can be a healthy single person in God's kingdom. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I think one of the areas in which it just jumps off the page as I look at that list is uh, the pace of life and rest. Um, I don't know if it's because I live in Northern Virginia or if it's because it's 2024. I know a lot of times my pace can be just unhealthy. Um, doing too many things, too many activities, too many things with the kids and family and too many things in my own life. And it's just all like that can go crazy. And then when I get to rest, because everything's crazy, I will rest in the wrong things. And I will rest by entertaining or just vegging or just not wanting to do anything because the rest of the pace of life is just a little too crazy. Um, and so many times when that area is off, then it will affect my family. It will affect my marriage. It will affect my mental health, my physical health. It will affect all these different areas that, that continue to get out of sorts. And so I really feel that, that some people in this room are also like me, where your pace of life probably is a little too chaotic. Um, and I was, I was really convicted about what you said as well last week, Pastor Josh, when you brought up, you're, you're discipling your family into something. What are you discipling them into? Um, well, there's been times when I've, like, had the busy day, and so we get home at night and tucking the boys in, and it's that, just that, like, quick checkbox prayer, you know? Or I'm just saying it with them. And, you know, that's going to happen occasionally, but... It definitely shouldn't ever become the norm. And so helping m m myself focus on this pace of life so that I can be a better husband, a better father, a better pastor. And so so we're, we're in this with you and want to encourage you, go to our homepage on our website and tell us, you'll click on the tab there, Tell us what it is you're leaning into this year, because we want to know how to resource you, um, how to lean into that in discipleship, and it's going to help form some of our, our sermon series. And so we just want to encourage you, spend some time in prayer. We're going to give some time to that here in just a moment. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah. I, I just want to say something about relationship. There's probably a handful of people that can come talk to you about where you're at. Mm-hmm. And this is why you have to have small groups. Yeah. This is why you have to have your people that are lifting up, right? Like, don't come up to me and talk crazy to me. TJ can do that. Stephanie can do that. My wife can do that. But we need to have the kind of community where you can have these kind of open conversations and we're posting and we're talking that, that we can help each other out of the relationship that I spend time and I pray for you and you pray for me. I lose sleep over your family, praying for you, and now I can speak life that you can do it. So I, I just want to put that, we need each other, but we need real relationship in the context of what we talk about. And just to unpack that in a very real way, <laughs> we let you guys know several months ago, about six months ago, the three of us went into counseling with everything that was happening this past year. And... You know, I, I walked into this year thinking, okay, I think I can go down to once a month. I'm doing pretty good. And now I, I'm asking my counselor, can I, can I call you every week? Like, can we connect? Like, there's a lot I'm processing. And I walked in this morning, and the three of us, they help, like, they help me process some stuff that is going on in my head. And because we're all processing some of it together. So it's kind of, you know, leaning into that mental health aspect together. Um, has been so good to know, man, I'm not in this alone, and I don't have to go talk to it about, you know, about it with everyone, right? Um, but we've got each other, and everyone needs that. Everyone does. So let's, let's stand to our feet, and let's, um, let's come before God. Let's open the altars. Let's come and worship him, as Paul instructs us, to give our whole selves over to God, not just sing songs. Let's give our whole selves and let's um, invite some of our prayer team members down up front here. And in case you have some, something you just want to, to connect with someone about and ask them to pray over it 
with you. We'll have some of our prayer team, but I want to just encourage you right now, find a place, maybe turn around, make the, the seat your altar, find a place here on the floor, but God, we give you ourselves. We're not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry to go get lunch. We're not in a hurry to go do what has to get done. Lord, we just want to come before you. Let's just spend a couple of moments coming before you, God, on our knees, on our faces, and crying out to you and saying, God, we want wholeness. Let this be a year of change in our lives. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone here that's never given themselves over to you completely, that they will today. They will not leave here. Jesus' name. I want to encourage you, if you don't know Jesus, you can come right now and find me. But don't run out of here yet. Let's come to the altar. Let's come and just submit ourselves. Let's come and worship before him and give him a moment to speak to us in response to his message. Amen. This is my desire to honor you. And Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, 
we're going to continue to just seek the Lord here. So I know some of you need to go, but I want to encourage you one more time. Don't leave here without receiving prayer. If you really know God is calling you to transformation this year and you're ready to own it, find a place here. We'll pray with you. Go live for Jesus this week.